Welcome to this lesson number one of Navigating Grief, a faith-based path. We're, we're doing this because you're grieving. I happen to be grieving right now, too. I just lost my dad a couple of weeks ago. There's good dads and there's bad dads. He was a good dad. So I'm grieving the loss of my dad. I don't know who you're grieving. I'm also still grieving the loss of my oldest son. Uh, we lost him uh, two years ago. Uh, we're approaching Christmas on the calendar as I record this, and my son died just a couple of days before Christmas. So there's a lot of fresh feelings coming into this lesson. So uh, please forgive me if I get a little emotional. I'm going to try not to because this is about your healing right now, not about my healing. If you missed the last lesson, it was more of an introduction. We went over everything we're going to go over here in this course. This is a 26 week course. So I'm glad you're here. I'm not glad you're here. The fact that you're here means you're grieving. So I'll take that back. I wouldn't wish grief upon my worst enemy, let alone you. I, and I don't, I'm not happy that you're grieving, but I am happy that you're trying to do something about it. And uh, you're taking the first step. And that's what this grief group is all about is helping you navigate grief get to a place where you can be happy about your life again and find fulfillment in your life and in, in God. And so that's everything that, uh, what, why we're here. Let's talk about this first lesson, the introduction to the grief journey. And if you'll forgive me, I'll have to read it word for a little bit. Then we'll get into some discussion points. Grief is an experience that touches us all at some point profoundly changing the landscape of our lives. And I know that's true. For those facing loss, the path forward can seem overwhelming. I'm Matt LeClear, and together with my wife, Kathy, we've walked in the painful road of grief. It's been a part of our life for two years now. We lost our oldest son just three days before Christmas. In 2022, and right now it's 2024, November 29th. So we're starting to wrap around to another anniversary of our son's death. Uh, he died because of kidney failure. Now, this life altering experience, it brought us to this course that you are watching right now and that you're taking. We knew that in order to heal ourselves, we had to help you heal too because we know what you're feeling. We know what you're feeling and it hurts. Even though you have faith and even though you're born again, you still hurt because you've lost somebody really close to you. So that's what we're gonna try to work our way through and get you healed to get to a place where you can smile and you have joy in your life again, because joy is coming, friend. Joy is gonna return to your life. It just will. Now. Let me welcome you. I did that already with warmth and understanding. This is me being warm and understanding. So if you're watching this, you may be navigating your own loss. I can't see why you'd be watching this for any other reason. Uh, for funsies, I don't think so. As you're going through your pain and as you're lost, understand that you're not alone. You're just not. There's a lot of people just like you going through the very same thing. And if we can band up together, we can help each other get through what we're going through. This grief support series and this course specifically is designed to help you process your pain, learn from others, and also reconnect with faith as a source of comfort and hope in your life. So those are the official reasons why we made this group. But reflecting on your loss, it's important. So before going further, take a moment right now, even to honor your loved one. You can hit pause and say their name out loud and write it down. If you have a prayer journal, if you bought a journal to go through this course, that's wonderful. Call it your grief journal, but write their name down on your grief journal, or maybe just reflect on a memory, something that you shared with them, something that was really important to you. Grief begins with love and holding on to that connection that you have with your loved one. What well, it's painful. There's no doubt it's painful, but it can be profoundly healing because as a born again Christian, your loved one did not die. They just mainly moved to another location. 
they are still alive. So your connection to them is still alive. You don't have to bury your connection with your loved one. So one of the things that we should probably talk about just before we even go any further is why are you here? What brought you here? What prompted you to sign up for this life group? Because understanding your reasons for doing so, it's going to provide you clarity and it's going to be something that will provide you a goal to work towards as you're going through this course. And I can't pick your goal for you. Maybe you're looking for comfort. Maybe you're looking for guidance or maybe just a sense of community. You're just saying, hey, listen, I need to be hanging out with people who are asshole grieving because I need somebody to talk to. Maybe that's why you're here. If that's the case, that's awesome. Well, I'm, I'm glad that you're here in, in that aspect and you're looking to get some healing. If maybe you're just looking to get through the grieving process in one piece. Because I got really nervous after my son died and I just fell to pieces. I, I had a story of, uh, I, I'd say, six months after our son died that I was a basket case. There's good grieving. Well, there's no good, there's no good way. There's no good grief. But there's something called bad grief. And no one likes to grief. But bad grief, it's, it's just really hard to go through. Uh, like I said, my wife... Kathy and I, we know firsthand about grief. The loss of our son, he was 31 or 32. That's, I can't remember anymore. It was a moment that tested every part of us. It's, it, it, and we have seven beautiful kids and three grandchildren. We have a full house. It's full of love. But every one of us was tested when our son went to heaven. We felt this deep chasm of pain. It just felt like it was just getting wider and deeper and wider every day. And it was just, for me, it just kept getting worse and worse and worse. So this series, this course that you're watching right now, it's born from moments like that where we're walking in healing now. We're walking healed. We're healed from the grieving. I don't want to say we're healed from the grieving process, but we are made whole from when our son died. And six months after, up to six months after he died, I was not whole. So what you have in front of you is me grappling with all that and with the Holy Spirit and coming up with something that could take a person that was basically rolled up in the fetal position on the floor of his bedroom crying in agony until until the point now where I can help you with your grief. And I s truly can tell you this, that I have joy in my life again. And one of the scariest things about what you're going through right now is that it feels like you'll never feel joy again. And as a born again believer, you're designed to run off of joy. The joy of the Lord is our fuel. And if you feel like you're never going to have joy again, that's a lie from the devil. And if you have decided to believe that lie, even for a little bit, it can be debilitating. It's a really scary lie to buy into that you're never going to feel joy again. It's just not true. So before we go any further, it's important that we understand grief. It isn't linear. You may have heard of the stages of grief. We'll get into that in the next lesson, but there's denial and anger and bargaining, depression and acceptance, but these don't follow a specific path. So if you've had denial, you can't say, okay, now I'm getting out of denial. I'm getting into anger. Now uh, feelings may come and go and they'll overlap and it's not linear what you're feeling. You might skip around from each stage to the next or back and forth until you're done with the grieving process. Everybody grieves differently. That's really important to understand. Now, one of the things that we will do in this course is our reflection exercises. It's up to you whether you do them, of course, but I recommend you do them and get a really good a journal. Buy a nice one. This is your grief journal. The person that you love and that you're grieving. 
was very important to you. So I think having a really good grief journal, something you paid some money for, will put a little more significance into the process of what you're going to be doing here during this course as you're doing these reflection, uh, re reflection exercises and the other things we're going to get into. So on your journal, and if you don't have a journal yet, you just get a piece of paper, write down one feeling that surprised you during your grief journey. Was it an unexpected moment of peace or was it an outburst of anger? You don't have to share it with anybody, but promise you, you were surprised by one of the emotions you felt as you were going through the grief process. Now, as you recognize the unpredictability of grief, it can help you embrace whatever path that you have to take to get healing because your path is going to be a unique path. And I'm talking about the path to your healing from your grief. So understand that it won't be linear. And probably the biggest thing that you'll take away from this course is finding comfort. One of the most profound lessons that we learn here on this life is that God's love for us remains, even in the darkest moments. The Bible is rich with promises of comfort and hope. Psalm 34, 18 is just one example. It says the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. Other scriptures can also provide reassurance. John 14, 1 through 3, do not let your hearts be troubled. My father's house has many rooms. I am going there to prepare a place for you. Revelation 21, 4 is another great scripture. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. As born-again believers, and you're included with that if you believe in Jesus, that he died for you and was resurrected, and on the third day he was resurrected, and now is on the right-hand side of God, sitting on the fa his Father's throne, interceding for you. If you believe that, you're born again, and your best days are in front of you. Your future is your friend. Even that looks like you know, this grief is, is, is something that isn't your friend, but your, the future is your friend. And where we go to get comfort for something like that is what we go to the Bible. We read the Word. The Word is God's Word to us. It is Him breathing life into us. So every time we read Scripture, God is breathing life into us as he breathed into Adam, and Adam became a living being right there in the Garden of Eden. So coping with early grief. Lesson one, this we'll talk about early grief. Even the most minor tasks might seem overwhelming to you right now. If you're in the early days of grief, you still might be in shock even. You, if you are in the early days of your grief, I'd be surprised if you're even watching this because shock is a real thing. Allow yourself to feel the pain without rushing to move past it. And that's important that we get into that because there's no wit way to really heal. You want to make sure that you're really healed by the time you get to the end of these lessons that you are in a position where you are, well, you're healed. You're in a, a better place than you were than when you started the course. And you may have to go through it a second time. And if so, that's, that's fine. You can go through it a second time. But in the early stages of grief, it can be overwhelming. Make sure that you just take time to drink water. I know that I had a really hard time drinking water after our son died. I, I get really dehydrated. I quit exercising. I used to walk all the time. Uh, so if that's you, if you're in the early stages of grief, do yourself a favor and drink some water and force it down yourself a little bit at least to, to, get, uh, to, to, to take care of your body. Take short walks. It's really good with this, for stress. And also listen to worship songs, as many as you can listen to. And just listen to them again and again and again until you can get to a place where you start feeling God's comfort coming in. It's important to get comfort from the Bible. It's important for you to reflect on your loved one and understand that your connection with them, because of the way God has set this entire life up here on earth, we're going in glory as we get to heaven, and God's going to bring another 
heaven and make another earth and then and the new heaven and new earth come down. Heaven comes down to the new earth and it's going to be combined forever. Now that's really good news, but we first have to get there, right? And so it's important that, that you find comfort in your faith. You get comfort from the Bible. Understand that your connection with your loved ones still exists. And if you are going through the early stages of grief, need to, to be practical and drink water, go on a walk, take care of yourself, try to eat, listen to worship music. That's about the best you can hope for when you're going through early grief. Trying any other exercises is going to prove really hard to complete because when you're in shock, your brain just doesn't think right. It just doesn't. So as a practical tip, choose one self-care action that you're going to commit to this week. I just gave you three of them. Choose one of them to do for the next seven days, drinking enough water perhaps, or just going for a walk or listening to worship music. You don't need to throw all three into your life right now to try to do them, but start including them in your life and start dialing those into into your life, uh, then you'll start moving along the grief pattern a little bit quicker. The rule of forgiveness. I had a really hard time with this because grief brings unresolved emotions, including guilt or anger. And I had a lot of guilt. I thought of every negative conversation I had with my son when he died, the ones especially the ones where I was wrong because of emotions. And now my dad passed a couple of weeks ago. I remember conversations with him, the negative ones where I was wrong. Guilt, it brings unresolved emotions. And that's something that, that you may even feel anger towards others because they're acting different in their grief than you are. Or maybe you're mad at yourself or your love for them. I was mad at my son for a while, and then maybe you're even mad at God. And that's where I eventually got to in my anger was I was upset with God because he didn't heal my son, our son. So that's something that, that, that is real The You need to forgive your loved one for dying. I, I, I know it sounds weird, but we do. And we need to forgive God for not healing him or her. We need to forgive ourselves for all the times we were human and, and acting, acted human and wrong towards our loved one that's no longer with us. There's a lot of forgiveness that comes into the healing process from grief. And that's where I went off the rails because I was angry at God. I was angry at myself. I was just angry. And I wasn't really in the mood to forgive anybody at the time. That's something to, to keep in mind is Ephesians chapter 4, verses 31 and 32. It says, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as Christ, God, forgave you. So forgiveness is a big tenet of Christianity, obviously. So ask God for the grace to forgive yourself. That's the hardest one to forgive. And also the other ones you'll forgive a lot easier, but forgiving yourself for me was the hardest one. And then I had to forgive God too for, for not healing my son. And I, what helped me finally get over that was God be loved. The Lord showed me how happy my son was right now living in heaven. He was, he's having a blast. And once I felt how happy my son was, I was happy for him and I no longer felt my pain about losing him. I said, okay, I can have a God be love for my son. He's in a better place. So looking towards eternity. Uh, as Christians, we can find hope in the promise of eternal life. The future is our friends as Christians. And uh, we're going to be reunited with our loved ones in Christ. That's an inevitability that's going to happen. We are going to be reunited with our loved ones that are in Christ Jesus. First Thessalonians chapter 4 says, we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Those are definitely encouraging words, being with the Lord forever. Having an eternal perspective doesn't erase your pain, but it gives context and hope. And that's really important. 
There's nothing you're going to find in this course that erases the pain of no longer having your loved one be somewhere where you can access them and talk to them and enjoy their company. That pain is real. But once you're able to, to move past the pain, not erase it, but move past it, you start looking for con context and hope. And, and it's, then you start getting into a, a position where you'll be healed. The power of community is important. My whole church has a beautiful community of, 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 of Christians who love one another. Healing often happens in connection with others. It may not be in our group as we get together for, for our meetups or we get together after service and go out to breakfast uh, some Sunday morning. Uh, the, the healing often comes in connection with others. It's, I, don't, I don't know why that is. It just is. So here are some practical ways to engage with your church family or your community. One way is to do what, like you did, is to join a grief support group. That's what we did. And we wanted to join a grief group at my whole church, but we were grieving and there wasn't one. So we started one and maybe you don't go, you don't go to my whole church and maybe you feel led to start your own grief group at my whole church. That would be fine. That'd be glorious. I'd be very happy if someone did that, but it's important to spend time with people who are also grieving. And if you need extra interaction, sometimes you can go do a grief share at another church and have a couple of them that you go to. That's just going to double the amount of people that you connect with. You can also partner with a, a prayer buddy to process grief together. A lot of the times widows will get together and do that. And once you're feeling better, you can volunteer to help others who are grieving and that will bring healing to your heart faster than anything. And it became in my life that I just had to get rid of the pain that was in me that I was feeling from our son dying. And I started ministering to others. And that's when I really started to feel better. And that's when joy returned to my life. I can't explain it. It just did. As soon as I got off of my own little pity party, where I felt sorry for myself for my loss, having lost my oldest son who was going to take over my marketing agency, our business, it was a big loss. But when I finally started helping others deal with their grief, I started healing in my own grief. So look for somebody that's grieving. And if you're in the first stages of grief, don't even try that yet. Take care of yourself, drink some water, listen to worship music, Go for walks, call loved ones, look at pictures, cry as much as you need to. Get that out of you. The crying, believe it or not, is healthy. Interactive activities for healing that you could do in the next week. I mentioned the prayer walk. Take a walk and talk to God about your grief. Reflect on the beauty of his creation as a reminder of his presence because he's with you. Another thing is to practice daily gratitude. If you have that journal, Write down one thing a day that you're grateful for. This practice can help you shift towards hope. It really can, because you'll start stringing hope after hope after hope, day after day. And in a born again believer, that just stimulates and spearheads healing. Uh, also, your reflection journal. Spend a few minutes each day writing down your emotions or memories. Your emotions are raw. And, it, it, and one of the what helped me with my emotion is to get them onto a journal. Think about that. Think about going for walks, prayer walks, talking to God, uh, practicing daily gratitude, string together some wins, find some things you're still grateful for God for, and string a bunch of them together and remind yourself of them that God really is good. He hasn't cursed you. He didn't look the other way. He's got his eyes on you. He loves you so much he can't take his eyes off of you. So that's something that, that I hope that you get from this course before, you, if you get nothing else, is that God has not abandoned you. In fact, he brought you to this course. He brought you to a path of healing because he loves you. So I'm glad that you're following that path. And it's my hope that you'll come back and do another lesson and another lesson and start processing some of this stuff so you can get it out in the open, in your own mind at least, and then start healing.
All right. So let's talk about the, uh, let's close up and uh, talk about some homework first. And we, we're, the homework is get a reflection journal, write down your thoughts or feeling each day. And maybe it'll take you five minutes. Maybe it'll take 10 minutes or half an hour, however long it takes. That That's fine. That's good. Also, self-care. Drink some water, go for walks, read your Bible, and listen to worship music. And commit to at least one of these acts of self-care every day of the week. And if you could do all three, four, that would be fantastic. But for right now, just one. And also scripture reflection. Maybe you want to reflect on Psalms 34, 18 or Romans 8, 28. There's just a sea of scriptures that you can uh, choose to find comfort in. And I will leave that between you and the Holy Spirit to, to what specific scriptures that you want to meditate on. But Psalm 34, 18 would be a pretty good start in my book. So that's, we always want to end in prayer. So let's do that. Lord, we ask you for your peace and comfort to be with us as we navigate this grief journey. Help us to feel your presence and draw strength from your promises. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you so much. Grief is a path walk step by step, and you just took another major step. But you don't have to walk it alone. Here you're seen, supported, and loved. Go ahead and find lesson one on your on our group here, and you can go to featured, and then right here was lesson one. And then when you're done with lesson one, I will go ahead. And I will meet you, and you click it right at lesson two. So thanks so much. I will see you in the next lesson, and I'll see you in the the group chat too, and and the, and I saw church. God bless you. I love you. The Lord Jesus certainly loves you. And Pastor Kevin loves you. I will see you on the next lesson.